a little bit later on this hour, our life segment at 51 after. We're going to talk with our CPA about the October filing deadline. It's actually today. All right, so if you haven't worked on your taxes yet, if you put, did an extension and you completely forgot about it, well, you got about another, oh, I don't know, 12 hours in some cases to get this in. You got to get it in uh, before midnight. We're going to talk to uh, Monica Rabella, CPA, about that. Some strategies. And by the way, how this whole shutdown has affected some people getting their taxes done on time for the last two weeks. You probably haven't been able to get a hold of the people that you were trying to get a hold of uh, in the IRS or Franchise Tax Board or wherever you happen to be calling. Listening to this show for as many years as I have, you know about the tax filing deadlines. Now, we talk about them all the time. Today, of course, is one of them. Now, if you filed for an extension way back when, you've got until midnight tonight to get your return filed with the Internal Revenue Service. But, of course, the shutdown has hampered some people's efforts in getting uh, certain forms filed or getting their questions answered. Well, here to answer a few questions on that tax deadline and a few other CPA matters is Monica Rabella. She's got 10 years with Price Waterhouse Coopers under her belt. Uh, she is also a, a pre past president of the California Society of CPAs in Orange County and Long Beach, California. And she's got her own uh, accounting agency. She's president of Rabella Accountancy Corporation in Tustin, California. Monica, I know you're just sitting around today just you know, whistling idly to yourself, twiddling your thumbs, nothing much going on, but I want to thank you for taking the time to join us for a few minutes today. My pleasure, Johnny. It's great to be there and uh, hopefully provide some last minute ideas for people. Yeah, boy, last minute, I tell you what, the tax deadline, just to reiterate, today is the last day. Is that right, if you filed an extension? It is today. Even with the shutdown, we still are required to get our tax returns in today with an extension. Right. So the IRS is not going to accept any excuses like, doggone it, the dog ate my homework because of the shutdown. They're not going to likely, they're not going to accept that, in other words, in, in your opinion. No, absolutely not. And money is due. You know, actually, absolutely. money would have been due April 15th, but uh, you're yeah. really in trouble if you don't pay it today. Send the rest in today. So now, in dealing with these tax returns over the past few weeks in your practice, have you noticed that, that, that the shutdown has had any real adverse effects on getting returns done before the tax filing deadline? Have you seen anything like that? Well, you know, my clients, and I'm not worried about calling the IRS to ask questions, right? And my clients call me, not the IRS. But I will tell you that you know, once they're answering the phones. You know, a lot of times in the past when we called the IRS, we would get, oh, your wait time is a half an hour to, to an hour. Our call back later, we're busy. Now it's just, we're not here. We're not answering your questions. Um, and no one's there at the offices. So people that are trying to get their returns done, be good citizen and get them done today by the deadline, there's no one there to help them. The area that I see with my clients sometimes is that they may not be able to pay today. So they right. found out with a big shocker that they might owe something. And what does that mean? No one there at the IRS is to answer their questions or how that's going to work. But the good news is they can still go to the website, irs.gov, and they can find, you know, payment arrangements. They can pay by credit card. All of that's still going to be happening today. So I want to let them know the website's still functioning for payments. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it, it, it is kind of strange. If people wait till the end in the last couple of weeks, no one's there to answer their questions or be there for them. So this is a good example, Monica, of people needing to plan ahead. So since we're in the last quarter of the year, do you have any uh, tax or planning tips from the CPA perspective for folks who'd like to maybe get a jump start on next year? Do you have any end of the year tax planning strategies? You know, absolutely. This is the time of year that I'm planning with my clients. They're coming in right now. We're discussing all of this right now. We're actually looking, is it this year that we want to do some things or next year that we want to do some time? So this is the time to do that. That's why you want a great CPA to work with because we take this time and attention with our clients to plan. And it's not always about taxes. It's part of the puzzle, but it's not all of it. And the calcpa.org website, where you can find a great CPA in your area, there's also information about, you know, your budgeting and your money. We call it dollars and cents you can find at calcpa.org. So great information. But here's what I'm working with with some of my clients that probably will help your listeners. But I did want to point one more thing out about the shutdown before we move on. Here's a great thing. With the shutdown of the government, they're taking your money, but they're not issuing refunds while it's shut down. <laughs> Gosh, really? Yeah. No, yeah. The, the cynic in me is starting to creep up here, Monica. Is that a fact? <laughs> Go, go figure. We want your money. We're not giving it to you until we come back. So <laughs> if you have refunds it's, and you want a paper check, it's going to take you three-plus months to see your paper refund. Just be patient. However, there is an ability on your refund to have it direct deposited into your bank account. 
Now, don't worry. The IRS already knows where your bank accounts are, so telling them to put it into one of them is not a problem. Also, you're not telling them they can take any money out. Just put money in. And that will be three weeks from the time they come back. So look, three months versus three weeks, you probably want to do the direct deposit. Direct deposit, electronic checks, great way to go. So now, again, the, with regard to any tax planning, I, we, we've got just about a month, uh, well, two months, two plus left, uh, things that they can do between now and the end of the year. Yep, it depends on whether they're an employee or if they own their small business. So let's address employees first. Yes. I find with a lot of my clients, they don't know if they're maxing out their 401k. So make sure they're going to the maximum of 17.5 a year, 5,500 5, more if they're over 50. Also, make sure they're not leaving money on the table if their employer is matching. So make sure they're doing that. Number two, flexible spending accounts. You know, they put money aside for medical dental. They forget yep. they've got to spend it by December 31. It reduces their W-2. They pay less taxes. Prepay your mortgage payment if you're able, but make sure you do it by December the 10th because banks cut off when they send information to the IRS, so you want to do it and make sure it's on the form that they give to the IRS. You want to look at your stock activity, make sure you're offsetting gains and losses so you don't have a big capital gain. Now with the new taxes, that can really be an ouch. Yeah. Okay? Um, so make sure with bonuses that if you can accelerate them and this is a better year, do that or put them into 2014 if you can. Yeah, that's always a good idea if you happen to know what your taxes might be. Take it this year or tell your boss wait till next year and hope that he, that he or she gives it to you next year. Uh, just a couple minutes left. Uh, small businesses, anything that they can do to minimize their tax liabilities for this year? Absolutely. You know, I'm doing this with my clients. Most of my clients are small businesses. We have a lot of professionals. We're looking at how many days they may or may not work the rest of this year because time is money. If they work, they make money. We may defer it to 2014, so they may be taking more time off this year before the end of the year. The other is if you are going to have a low year, accelerate your projects into 2013 or pre-bill for 2014, get that done, or defer them, right? Mm -hmm. Prepay your bills in December. So make sure you're prepaying everything that you can, your rent, your CPA, whatever it is you can do to reduce your profit. Don't forget about retirement plans. You still have time if you're the only owner or your spouse in you. Do 401K. Again, you can do 175 or 5500 and 5500 if you're over 50. Mm -hmm. You can still do profit sharing to find benefits, get them set up at the end of the year and fund them all the way to September of 14. So we don't want to do that. Also, look at cash, out-of-pocket cash on business expenses. We forget as small business owners to keep receipts. It can be thousands of dollars. I've got one client oh, yeah. pay $4,000 in extra expenses. Mike, it's amazing the, the, the difference if you do just a little bit of tax planning, how much it can save you. Uh, we're out of time. If somebody needs to get in touch with you, Monica, how can they do so if they need some information on CPA or whatever it is? Uh, how can they get in touch with you? They can get in touch with me at area code 714 619 0667. Look forward to it. Thanks so much. Monica Rabella, thank you for joining us. Uh, uh, we appreciate it. Always good to hear from CPAs. We say all the time on this show that we actually do. Diana, we do a lot of tax planning. We do a lot of planning on the show, but we have no mind for whatever forms you got to fill I out. Know. It's just too much, which is why we say CPAs exist. All right. Lots more to come. There's another hour of this program, so stick around. It's the Boomer's Brain Trust. I'm Johnny Dean for Dina Smith and everybody behind the scenes. More to come. Don't go away. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We're talking about what's important to you, your money, your business, your life. This is Boomer's Brain Trust. The views and opinions expressed on the show are not necessarily those of the station or its sponsors and should not be considered as legal tax or investment advice. You should always consult with the appropriate advisors before making any financial decision.